every morning started the same way. A voice from across the room beckoned. Psst! Hey, you! Yes, you! You, come over here. I want to show you something. And every morning, as if under a curse, she dutifully got out of bed, walked across the floor, and stood face to face with her tormentor. Oh, she knew her nemesis very, very well. And still, she felt hopeless, defenseless against the old stories of self-judgment and loathing, replaying themselves over and over and over on an endless loop before her eyes. But this morning was different. This morning, it was her voice she heard loud and clear, saying, You in the mirror on the wall, I do not hear your beck and call. You refuse to show the best of me, but I am so much more than you can see. And when she walked across the room to face the one waiting there, she stared long and hard into the eyes looking back at her. And then, just like that, the pain vanished. The fear was gone. The spell had been broken. She saw herself clearly for the first time in ages, and to remind herself never to forget who she really was, she wrote herself a love letter and stuck it on the mirror. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Who do you see? And is she friend or foe? Happy Women's History Month, my bright lighters. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Aquitaine Project. I'm Marlo Mead, your host, guide, and fellow traveler on a journey of self discovery. On my podcast, I bring to light the stories, voices, and legacies of women past and present, women I affectionately call my bright lighters. For me, these women transcend time and share with us wisdom and life lessons we can use in our own lives each and every day. Shining their light from different centuries, cultures, and corners of the earth, they make it possible for us to become bright lighters in our own right. So if you're ready to learn a little, grow a little, laugh a little, and shine a lot, keep on listening. You've probably heard the expression, being your own worst critic. You've probably experienced it too. That critical inner voice so good at negative self-talk. You know the one that chimes in with toxic messages of doubt, fear, blame, or judgment. Sadly, the world around us can amplify the critical thoughts we have about ourselves. Images of perfect people with perfect looks, perfect bodies, and perfect lives have conned us into thinking that if we don't look a certain way or live a certain lifestyle, well, we must not be perfect. So, what's the point of trying? And here's the problem with this type of thinking. It can become a habit, a very nasty habit. And if we start believing what we're telling ourselves, especially if it's not true, we can negatively impact our mental, emotional, and physical health. 
This constant negative chatter can have so much power over us that we might talk ourselves out of going after our goals or experiencing joyful moments in our lives. And life is way too short to miss out on any of the good stuff. So when Caitlin Boyle came face to face with her own inner critic staring back at her in the bathroom mirror, she stared right back, wrote herself a note that said, You are beautiful stuck it on the mirror, and an underground campaign to recognize the beauty within every woman was born. Let's learn what Caitlin Boyle and Operation Beautiful can teach us about loving ourselves and inspiring women all over the world to love themselves too. As a teenager, Caitlin Boyle was a really good student who always appeared to be happy and upbeat. But underneath her Susie Sunshine demeanor, Caitlin battled with depression and low self-esteem. When things got really bad, she struggled with harming herself and trying to cope with life in other unhealthy ways. During college, like many people, she went through some tough times trying to discover who she was and what she wanted out of life. But unfortunately, she was, as she says, a glass half-empty kind of person and her negative outlook on life continued to color her young world. After graduating college in 2006, she found a job as an urban planner that she really liked. For a few years, it was great, but eventually, she became disillusioned with her work. So in 2008, Caitlin started her blog, Healthy Tipping Point, as a way to document her journey to lead a healthier, happier, and more balanced life. A year later, she went back to college to pursue her dream and get a degree as a physical therapist. But working a full-time job she didn't like, blogging, and taking night classes began to take their toll. She started having a hard time in her science classes and began to really get down on herself. It was really bugging her because she had always done so well in school. One day, everything came crashing down on Caitlin when she got a 40% on a chemistry test she'd studied so hard for. She was so upset with herself that she went into the bathroom to cry. Looking in the mirror, all she could hear was a negative inner voice telling her how stupid she was and that she wasn't good enough or smart enough to pursue her dreams. And that voice just wouldn't shut up. Tired of beating herself up, Caitlin took a good, hard look at herself in the mirror, took out her eyeliner and a sticky notepad, wrote the words, You are beautiful, and stuck the note on the mirror. Then she took a picture of the note and posted it on her blog. It was in that moment that Operation Beautiful was born. After posting the picture, she asked her Healthy Tipping Point readers to post their own notes, but didn't think anybody really would. Much to her surprise, three days later, Caitlin had received 75 responses, and that number just kept growing. In a matter of days, women were posting uplifting notes and sticking them on gym lockers, in the diet shake section of the supermarket, weight loss guides in bookstores, and anywhere else a nagging voice of self-criticism might lurk. The mission of Operation Beautiful, or Operation OB for short, is simple. Post anonymous messages in public places for others to find, encouraging them to think more positively about themselves. It sounds so simple, I know, but the effects can be truly amazing. She never intended to start a grassroots movement that would impact the lives of countless women around the world. It just happened. As Caitlin says, OB took on a life of its own, and the results have been mind-blowing. When asked about some of her favorite OB stories, Caitlin recounts a letter she received from a teenager in Canada. According to Caitlin, and I quote, This young girl was in an eating disorder treatment facility for anorexia and at a critical place with her illness. Her doctors were telling her she was going to die. She was losing her hair and under constant medical monitoring. Her life was crumbling. She told me that when she went into the bathroom to throw up, she found an OB note on the stall door that said, You're good enough the way you are. Signed by OB.com. 
She said that finding that note and knowing that it was written by a stranger, she took it as a sign from God or a message from the universe. In her email to me, she wrote, I'm going to get better. I was thinking her anorexia is so severe. How much can a piece of paper really help her? Well, a few months later, I followed up with her, and she said she was out of the hospital, had gained a bunch of weight, and was back in school. She was doing really well. Whoever posted that note will never know what their note did. Unquote. Since its inception, thousands of Operation Beautiful notes have been posted all over the world in many different languages by people of all ages. And while the campaign may affect a staggering number of women and girls struggling with depression, negative body image, and eating disorders, it has also reached a number of men throughout the world. It's not just a woman thing, you know. Men and boys can face negative and body self-esteem issues too. And Operation Beautiful has made it a point to share the You Are Beautiful message with everyone. Fast forward 14 years, Operation Beautiful is still impacting lives. It's been adopted and adapted by high schoolers, middle schoolers, even elementary schoolers to include not only body issues, but bullying in school as well. As for Caitlin, she has written several books on how we can help ourselves and others feel beautiful. You can find links on the podcast website. She's also a motivational speaker and entrepreneur working to promote happy, healthier lifestyles for women around the world. Operation Beautiful is all about transforming the way we see ourselves and about spreading positivity and encouragement to others who need a little inspiration to see themselves in a more positive light. But let's be real, sisters. Many of us experience a lot of anxiety about our bodies, the way we look, and our own self-worth, resulting in our own versions of negative self-talk. I personally think everyone needs to hear messages of self-love, self-acceptance, and self-respect. The trick is getting ourselves and others to believe in those messages. Let's take a deeper look into how we can embrace the Operation Beautiful mindset, turn off that inner critic in our heads, and learn to love and accept ourselves for who we are. You've been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. Louise May We all do it. A little dig here, a little jab there. We know just how to push our own buttons, don't we? We criticize the way we look and say things to ourselves like, I'm fat. I'm too skinny. I look old. I hate my hair. It's too frizzy. My nose is too straight. My lips are too thin. I'm going to get Botox. Do you see all those wrinkles? My butt's too big. My boobs are too small. And here's one of my go-tos. Man, you look horrible in that dress. Yes, I've been known to say that to myself on a few occasions. Wow, we can nitpick ourselves to death if we're not careful. And that's just the physical stuff. And when it comes to our emotional landscape, things can get pretty dark. Berating ourselves when we mess up a presentation or project at work. Telling ourselves we're stupid when we do poorly on a test. Beating ourselves up for failing to live up to other people's expectations. Or convincing ourselves that we are unacceptable, unworthy, or unlovable. And those nasty negative thoughts we sometimes think about color everything from how we feel about ourselves to how we feel about others and the world around us. Now, for the most part, I'm comfortable with who I am and how I look. My mothering skills are out of this world, just ask my kids, and I'm a pretty darn good cook. I love my smile, even though my teeth aren't perfectly straight, and I used to be self-conscious of my hands because I think they look older than the rest of me. But these hands love to dig in the dirt and plant gardens, and they love to cook from scratch, so I guess I'll keep them. Then there are those areas in my life that I struggle with at times, such as weight issues like millions of women on the planet, and sticking up for myself in certain situations. Of course, deep down, I know the answer to both of these issues, 
but self-doubt and negative self-talk can get in the way of the very best of intentions. Sisters, how we speak to ourselves is incredibly important. It's the story we tell ourselves about our lives, feelings, and experiences, and sometimes those stories just don't reflect the truth. So let's figure out how to change the negative self-talk to positive self-acceptance and see ourselves for the beautiful, magnificent beings that we are. There are many definitions of negative self-talk, but I like this one from VeryWellMind.com. Basically, negative self-talk is any inner dialogue you have with yourself that may be limiting your ability to believe in yourself and your own abilities and to reach your potential. It's any thought that diminishes your ability to make positive changes in your life or your confidence in yourself to do so. Now, some people call that negative inner dialogue your inner critic. I call it the saboteur, that voice that just ruins everything and makes you feel crappy about yourself. And this nasty little creature can have some pretty damaging effects, such as increased feelings of anxiety, depression, and stress while at the same time lowering our self-esteem and belief in our self-worth a double whammy. The College of Cognitive Behavioral Therapies, or CCBT, suggests that negative self-talk can lead to a vicious cycle and self-fulfilling prophecies. For example, if we tell ourselves that we will not be able to do something, we may be less likely to put effort into doing it. Then, when we fail, we think, I knew I couldn't do it then we fall into a destructive cycle of negativity. What we may not see is that negative self-talk just keeps us stuck in that cycle and has the ability to steal our happiness because we can't focus on the positive things in our lives when our minds are preoccupied with the negatives. That little saboteur can impact our relationships, our hopes, and our opportunities for a happy, healthier, more fulfilling life. And you guys... Life is way too short to miss out on all the good stuff. I love this quote. We all have problems, obstacles, and challenges in our lives, but when we talk to ourselves negatively, it puts the lid right on the can. So unscrew the lid, my sisters, and say nice things to yourself. Psychology Today has several good articles on the effects negative self-talk has on our body image and self-esteem. I found this particular observation very interesting and oh so true. Once you start to think that you have a flaw, your mind runs with the distraction and turns it into more than it is, all of which affects the way you think and feel about how you look and about life in general. Man, we can make a mountain out of a molehill about anything we don't like about ourselves. The article also has some great advice for overcoming those pain-in-the-butt body issues many of us deal with, such as putting body image into perspective by limiting the use of social media where people are constantly reminded of the unrealistic value placed on how we look. Our body image should not hinge on whether a person looks like a runway model. And I love this one. Consider everything your body does for you. Write your body a letter of gratitude for the way it has served you throughout your life. Okay, sisters, I think this is a fantastic way to show ourselves some much-needed love. So go ahead and write it on a sticky note if you like. Speaking of learning to love ourselves just the way we are, here are a few more tips to turn off our negative self-talk and stop that inner saboteur in its tracks by Louisa Jewell positive psychology expert, the author of Wire Your Brain for Confidence, and founder of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association. According to Louisa, we need to cultivate self-awareness. Our tendency for negative self-talk is often automatic, so the first step in challenging negative thoughts is to become aware that we are having them. Louisa states it's not just about becoming aware of what we're saying to ourselves, but also when we're saying it. Understanding the triggers can help us develop the self-awareness we need to challenge our negative thoughts. Once we become more self-aware, we need to dispute the thoughts. It can be helpful to think of any evidence that disproves the negative thoughts we're having. For instance, if our thought is, I'm terrible at my job, 
ask yourself whether there's any evidence to the contrary. Did your boss or teammate recently praise you for your work? Did you get a great performance review? Disputing the thoughts with positive evidence can help us reaffirm our capabilities and increase our self confidence. Next, we need to practice self love. This is a biggie. Having compassion for ourselves is also key to overcoming negative thinking. We want to be able to love ourselves first, to have full acceptance of who we are, flaws and all, to accept the fact that we are imperfect. When we can do that, the negative self-talk backs off. We love ourselves and we've decided that we're not going to continue to speak to ourselves in that way. We make it clear to our inner critics and saboteurs that they are not welcome. Next, Louisa suggests we embrace gratitude. Positive psychology research shows that gratitude improves emotional well-being and boosts happiness, which can also make it a valuable tool for rewiring negative thinking. The next time you find that you're criticizing yourself, finding gratitude for where you are and what you've created for yourself can help change your mindset. I would add to Louisa's list something I personally find very helpful. Using meditation and positive affirmations to turn down the noise in our heads and change how we talk to ourselves. Meditation is shown to have many benefits on psychological well-being and can help train the mind to stop believing every negative thought we think. Positive affirmations, like the ones written on Operation Beautiful Sticky Notes, are phrases that help us focus on the positive and remind us to believe in ourselves and what we're capable of achieving. I find using a combination of meditation and positive affirmation a fantastic way of shutting off my inner saboteur and helping me focus on how wonderful I am and how much greater my life can become. There are tons of resources, books, and guides on meditation and the power of positive affirmation if this type of thing appeals to you. The point is to find ways and techniques that will help us learn to love and appreciate ourselves because loving ourselves is the greatest gift we can give to ourselves, to others, and to the world. When you stop living your life based on what others think of you, your real life begins. At that moment, you will finally see the door of self-acceptance opened. Shannon L. Adler Body image and self-esteem start in our mind and how we feel about ourselves, not in the mirror. When we make the decision to stop beating ourselves up for every little thing we dislike about ourselves, we can walk through that door and find the joy in accepting our imperfections as a part of being human. And it starts with each of us learning to manage, better yet, to silence that inner voice that tells us we are not good enough. Well, I have news for you. You are good enough. In fact, we are better than good enough. We are fabulous. Operation Beautiful is such an uplifting way to stamp out negative self-talk and encourage us to be the best versions of ourselves, whether we're the person finding the note or the one posting it. But beyond this, OB has created a global sisterhood through which we can experience the joy of self-acceptance and celebrate our beautiful, unique selves, while at the same time helping our sisters around the world do the same. Because when we do positive, loving things for others, we boost our own self-esteem and self-love. So no matter where we live, what we do, what language we speak, or what stage of life we're in, we are all beautiful, capable women who deserve love and respect, especially from ourselves. I say we make self-love and acceptance a daily habit, shall we? What a wonderful way to set a positive example for other women, and especially the young girls in our lives. In honor of Caitlin Boyle and Operation Beautiful, let's challenge ourselves to develop the skills we need to turn down the negativity, turn up the positivity, 
and believe in the beauty of Y-O-U. Then, let's go out and remind every woman we know, and even the ones we don't, that they are beautiful too. Okay, my bright lighters, get out those markers and sticky notes and leave those messages of love all over the place so your sisters can find them. Why I Love Operation Beautiful When Caitlin Boyle looked at herself in a mirror 14 years ago, she didn't like what she saw, and the negative self-talk coming from the voice inside her head reinforced what she saw and felt in that moment. Feelings of doubt and worthlessness and all sorts of negative thoughts had snuck their way into her mind. And when she recognized what was happening, she instinctively wrote her now famous You Are Beautiful note to herself, and in that moment created a movement that has positively impacted the lives of thousands of women and men around the world. Okay, here's the honest truth. We all have had such moments. Moments, days, weeks, months, heck, maybe years, where we have beaten ourselves up, put ourselves down, and diminished our own self-worth. I'm willing to bet even the most seemingly confident women in the world have had their own battles with their inner saboteurs. Take me, for instance. As I discussed earlier in the podcast, I'm pretty confident in certain areas of my life, and although I've known Victoria's secret for years, <laughs> look it up, there are times I still struggle to be more loving and accepting of myself, and despite knowing all the benefits that come with creating a stronger sense of self, which is foundational to the Aquitaine Project mission, my personal little saboteurs can still get in the way of what I think and how I feel about myself, if I let them. The key is not to let them. Easier said than done, I know, I know. But here is the beauty of Operation Beautiful. Whether we write them to ourselves, to friends and family, to co-workers, or leave them for random strangers to find, I believe those little colorful sticky notes have the power to change lives. For me, Caitlin Boyle's Operation Beautiful has stood the test of time and lights the way for each of us to shine a light for others and create happier, healthier relationships with our most intimate partners, ourselves. To learn more about Caitlin Boyle and Operation Beautiful, click on the Operation Beautiful portrait on the Aquitaine Project podcast website at www.theaquitaineproject.com. Once there, you'll find links and resources to help you learn about the destructive nature of negative self-talk and how to confront and quiet your inner critic once and for all so you can develop a happier, healthier self-image. Let's connect on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube, or reach out directly at theaquitaineproject at gmail.com. Okay, my beautiful brightlighters, get out those sticky notes and start sharing love and positivity with yourself and all those around you, because somewhere there's somebody who needs to be reminded they are beautiful too. You got to free.